Good afternoon, everybody. Um, thank you for coming along to this session of enhancing Einstein with fine-tuned large language models. I know there's loads of other sessions on at the moment, so thank you for turning up to this one. I think that every given time, there's about 11 other sessions you could be at. So until we learn to clone ourselves, we have to make these decisions. So thank you. Um, I'm Keir Bowden, also known in the community as Bob Buzzard. I'm the CTO for Salesforce at Credera, MVP Hall of Fame, CTA. I've been in the industry forever, 16 years in Salesforce, one year with generative AI. And since I put this slide together, I got a shiny new hoodie yesterday, so that was very nice. So this is what I'm going to talk about today. First off, an overview of fine tuning, what it is, how you fine tune a model, once you've fine tuned it, how you bring it into Salesforce, bringing your own model, and then how you use that fine tuned model, how you configure that into Agent Force. You're going to see references to Copilot rather than Agent Force because I'd already submitted all this before the names changed. I'll try and remember to change them, but mentally, anything, anything that says anything, change it to Agent Force and you won't go far wrong. So, um, I don't know if anyone was in the previous session, um, but again, the presenter was talking about a similar thing to me, to what I'm going to talk about now. Before we go into fine tuning, take a step back and look at how large language models work. So these are pre-trained on huge amounts of data pulled from the internet, and they're intended to react as a general chatbot. They're intended to be conversational. So if you don't tell it you want to behave in a particular way, it won't know that. It will just fall back on its default training and behavior. So if I'm trying to do something around identifying sentiment, um, so what I'm going to say is the game was exciting, and I'm hoping to get back something saying that's a positive statement, that's a negative statement. But it doesn't know any of that because I haven't told it. So what it does, it's very conversational with me. Oh, I'm so pleased for you. What game was it? Oh, isn't life great? Um, which is all very nice, but that's not what I want. So what I tend to fall back on then is few shot prompting, which is where I change the behavior of the, um, of the, the artificial intelligence by providing examples. I say, given this question, this is the response. Given a different question, this is the response I want. So what I do here is I say, if given some text, the weather was nice, return a classification of positive, one is OK, uh, just an equal sign, that test was tough, that's negative. So now if I say text, the game was exciting, it knows what I want. I've given it an example. I've kind of retrained it, but purely for the context of this request. And it immediately comes back with classification positive. So this is awesome, but I have to do this for every single request I make. And it consumes tokens, so it's costing me money because I'm having to do quite a big prompt just to get it to behave in a particular way. So when you fine tune a model, you start off with the pre-trained LLM, the broad model, something like, in my case, it's OpenAI GPT Turbo 3.5. Um, that's got its broad training. But then I apply another data set to it. I get some other training examples, and I give it some examples of how I want it to behave. For example, rather than putting it into the prompt about this is a, uh, some text and this is the classification, I put that in a file and I retrain it, which means I don't have to remind it every prompt. It already has that capability. And that gives me a fine-tuned LLM optimized for a task. Um, and if you look at my icon there in the middle, you'll see a little sneak preview of what I was trying to do with this fine-tuned LLM. Now, the benefits to this, shorter prompts, cost you less money. It's reduced latency because they can be processed quicker. Um, something that's often overlooked, because this is my own fine-tuned LLM, which needs my API key to access it, I can put proprietary data in there. It's not going to be opened up to everybody else in the world. Um, and I'm going to get more accurate and relevant responses because of the way I've trained it. And crucially, you can customize the style and tone. And this and few shot prompting are really the only way to do that. I think you will hear this referred to in Salesforce demos as the brand voice. So I can always get it to respond in a particular way. So if you're going to create a fine-tuned model and you want to get that into Salesforce, these are the steps you have to do. First thing you have to do is decide what, you, what you're trying to do with it. Then you get some training data. Then you train your model. Then you connect to Salesforce. That's the bring your own model bit. Then you configure Prompt Builder to use that model that you bought. And then you do some copilot instructing, which gets it to trigger that particular model. For this, you will need a data cloud license, because um, bring your own model is part of probably Agent Force Studio now. Um, so you need a data cloud license for that. And you'll also need a, an Agent Force license, which was an Einstein license, I would imagine. So fine tuning a model, identify your task. I wanted to speak at Dreamforce. 
and I was really interested in fine-tuning a large language model. And I thought, why don't I fine-tune one to generate my title and abstract? And I have to say it's successful. It's worked really well for me. Your mileage may vary. Um, then you identify the training data. So for this, I need some really good examples of titles and abstracts that have been successful at things like Dreamforce. And wouldn't you know it, there's a couple of sites that are really, really helpful for this. I can go to the Dreamforce site, and I can see from last year the, um, the titles and the abstracts that were successful. I can also go to Trailblazer DX and see the same thing. The great thing about this training data is I know it's exactly what required, what's required, because these were successful applications to speak at those events. So if I do something in a similar vein, it might have changed a little bit this year, but I should be in, a good, in with a good chance of getting selected. So that was relatively straightforward as well. Um, so fine-tuning a model, you need to prepare some training data based on that information. But it needs to be in a particular format. You can't just point at a Dreamforce website and say, scrape all the session information. This needs to be in JSON-L format, which is essentially a fully-fledged JSON uh, object per line, so multiple JSON objects in a single file. And each JSON object is an example. So this is a JSON object. It would normally be on a single line, but I've just broken it up and formatted to make it a bit easier. So the first thing I have to do is provide a role. So the role for every one of mine was you're an expert on Salesforce who creates session ideas for conferences on demand, because that's what I'm trying to do. Then I have the assistant. So this is the response. This is what I've pulled from something like the Dreamforce site or the Trailblazer DX site. I've got a title, Prompt Builder 101, and an abstract which tells me all the information. So I know I'm making this sound really easy. All I've done is I've just basically gone off. I've come up with an idea. I've scraped loads of information from the web, and I've just dumped it in there. Um, and thus far, it's true. Where the difficult bit comes in and where the creativity comes in is this is essentially what prompt would a user have to give an LLM in order to get that response from the assistants. Um, not always straightforward. And also, when you're defining these prompts, remember that this is the style of prompt that you're going to have to give when you use this. So you notice mine's really short there. Give me the details for an entry-level session on prompting generative AI. I don't want to have to give a really long prompt with loads of rules around it, because I might as well use something like GPT at that point in time. I don't need a fine-tuned lang large language model. So that's the concept I'm going for there. So then I have to train the model. So my examples are going to be OpenAI, because I've got an account with OpenAI. Other providers are available. Um, all this is documented at the link there that you can see, platformopenai.com fine tune. But the first thing I have to do is create a project, and then I generate an API key. And that is the thing that secures my large language model. So unless someone has my API key, they cannot use my, um, my model. Then I go into um, OpenAI. I choose um, what I want to do, which, sorry, which base model that I want to um, tune. Um, unless you're in a pilot program, you can't do it on GPT-4. But actually, when you're fine tuning, GPT-3.5 is fine, and it's way cheaper, so it's well worth doing. I've uploaded my file. Um, it's given it a nice new name of file hyphen whatever. Um, and then I give it a suffix. That's the key thing. That's how I identify my model. I tell it it's Dreamforce. Then it goes away for a while, and it comes back. And hopefully, it gives me that green tick in the middle there, succeeded. And it gives me a very long name, which is the name of my model. And at that point in time, I can take that model, and I can drop that into the OpenAI playground. And I can start making some requests to see if it's performing the way I want. Um, this can go wrong if your JSONL isn't particularly well formatted, but you normally get really detailed error message. So while I did mess it up a couple of times, it literally took me 30 seconds to, oh, yeah, figure out what it was and then submit it again. Um, once you've got your model, you then need to plumb it into Salesforce. So this is where you go into Data Cloud to something whose name has almost certainly either changed or is about to change. It was Einstein Studio when I took these um, screenshots probably Agent Force Studio. But that's where you want to go into. And you want to click on the Generative tab there. And then it'll ask you what type of model that you want to connect, in my case, OpenAI. I then put in some endpoint information. Key thing here is the name of my endpoint, the fact that it's key-based authentication, my API key, and then the name of the fine-tuned model, how it's going to be referred to within Salesforce. I call it Dreamforce because I'm really creative like that. It then does a testing of the connection. 
Um, and then it should come back and tell me that it's been able to connect it. And we say Dreamforce, 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 Dreamforce over and over again. Again, because I'm very creative. The only thing is, at this point in time, I can't use this. Because you can see configured models is zero. So I've got this plumbed in, but I need to configure an additional layer to it so that Salesforce can actually use it. And if you get an error at this point, my experience is you don't get an awful lot of information. So you might have a bit of trial and error. So I, I have got a number of these models, and I use the wrong API key. And it took me a little while to realize that that's actually what I'd done. Um, so you click into creating a new configured model. If you've used Prompt Builder, this will look very familiar. This is actually the model playground, but it's a similar concept. I can type in a prompt, I get a response, and I can tweak the model configuration. So basically, with my single fine-tuned model, I can have multiple configured models that are more or less creative if that's what I want. I didn't do any of that in this case. I just went with the defaults, which worked fine for me. Um, and then once I've done that, I just give it um, name, again, Dreamforce, a little bit more information. And then we go back to the model level. We'll see configured models. I have one. It's chat completion. I'm now in a position to start using that. So using my fine-tuned model, um, so I'm going to send a link. I'm going to put up a link with resources, but I've got an application which is basically it has sessions, which are things I might want to present at a conference. It has if Trailblazer events, which are conferences. Then I have this Trailblazer event session, which is the thing that I'm going to pitch. So what I was using Copilot for was to suggest me a title and abstract to go into that Trailblazer event session. Um, and I then need to create some prompts. So I created two identical prompts so that I had a control group and my fine-tuned group. So this is my control group. This is using standard GPT 3.5. Um, just give you a moment to read that. There's not an awful lot there of, in terms of instructions. But the main thing at the bottom is that I've told it how many characters for the title and how many characters for the abstract. Because Dreamforce is one where actually it's one of the shorter um, abstracts I find. So you have to be much more punchy. Then I've got exactly the same thing. The only difference is on the right-hand side, um, I've got a custom model, and that is my Dreamforce model. So that's going to hit my fine-tuned LLM. So let's see what it does. So this is using the standard uh, ChatGPT 3.5. So this isn't going near my um, fine-tuned LLM. So basically, it's got the details of the session. It's, it's got the details of Dreamforce, details of my session, generate me a title and abstract. So the first thing it came up with was boosting user trust, AI-driven copilot enhancements. Not great, because is there such a thing as non-AI-driven copilot? Not very helpful. It's also saying explore how fine-tuned LLMs. Like you're coming to a session, you're expecting to explore something. So this is all extraneous. It's not very useful. So I asked it to go again, enhance the user experience with AI-powered copilot. It's doubling down on the AI. Copilot is AI-powered. This doesn't add anything. It's pulled a lot of information from my example, but also it's also put in at Dreamforce 2024. So if you're coming along to this, you know you're at Dreamforce 2024. You don't need an abstract to remind you of that. Um, this is probably the best one that I could get, but again, not fantastic. It's still AI-driven copilot enhancements. It still talks about exploring, but it is talking about domain-specific data, ensuring accuracy, relevance, and user satisfaction. So now let's go on to my fine-tuned model. So this is the first one. As you can see, it's much punchier, it's much snappier, and it's much more the sort of thing you'd expect to see at Dreamforce. Um, it's not great. It's still pulled the domain-specific data. It's pulled a lot of stuff from my example, so I have another go. Enhanced Copilot, fine-tuned LLMs, same um, title. And again, slightly longer response, but I don't like that also helps with user trust and satisfaction. That's not what Dreamforce wants to see. Um, this is this one I really like, and this is the one that it came back with. I didn't use this directly, but this is the one that I then refined myself. Supercharged Copilot with fine-tuned LLMs, enhanced Copilot with actions, detailed understanding of how business operates. So that's really snappy, really punchy, and that's what I wanted out of it. So fine-tuning is so great. Why don't we do it for everything? Um, so fine-tuning is based on domain-specific knowledge, and you can control the style and tone. And that's what I really wanted to do here. I wanted to have a title and abstract that are in the style of tone of previous Dreamforces, previous Trailblazer DX sessions, because that's what they're looking for. However, it is prone to hallucination because it's still an LLM. I'm not giving it an awful lot of grounding data. So it has that issue. It's a static model. I've retrained it. 
But if I then get to the end of this year's Dreamforce and think I want to add in that information, I have to train this model again. I can't just add to it very easily. Um, it can lose its generic capabilities when you fine tune. This is known as catastrophic forgetting. So it's great at my particular domain, but if I say to it the game was great, it gives me a really weird answer. This isn't so much of a problem with Salesforce because you can just choose to use that particular LLM for specific prompts. So if I've got a more general prompt template, I don't have to use this. I'm not tied to a single model. But that is something to remember. And the data is still stored externally. It's secured by my API key, but it's still with OpenAI, and it's still in a different um, geography. So that may be a problem. Um, the other thing to think about in this space is retrieval augmented generation, which you've, you've heard a lot about this week, and I'm sure you'll hear more about. Um, so again, this is grounded with domain-specific knowledge. It's not trained in it. It's less prone to hallucination because the prompt contains so much information. Um, you can update the data that you're using for grounding without doing any retraining. That's really straightforward. And the data is stored privately because it always sits in your systems. You just hand it over on a prompt, and it's never stored anywhere. However, it may introduce irrelevant information because it may pull in too much grounding information. But those are really, if you're trying to do this kind of thing, those are really the two technologies you want to look at. Um, so this is the resources I was talking about. Um, there's an example repository at GitHub which has the metadata, it has the prompt templates, it has the fine tuning data so you can see what goes in there. It's actually very small and very straightforward for this particular requirement. Um, there's also some Trailhead content in there and there's some courses and some external information outside of Trailhead. Um, and I'm now going to do a Columbo close because one more thing, you don't have to do this as of next year. Um, I've done it the hard way, but it's coming to the platform. So there are going to be, I think there was a session about this earlier on today. Um, but it, essentially, rather than having to go out, create your open AI account, um, set up all that training data, connect it in through bring your own model, it's going to be a lot more straightforward. You're still going to have an external model that is actually fine tuned, but Salesforce is going to do all that heavy lifting for you. So it's going to be much more kind of clicks within Salesforce. Um, which brings me to the end of my session. Thank you very much for your time. Um, please fill in the feedback for the survey. The first 4,000 attendees to provide feedback on this event, so I think you might have missed the boat given that it's the second day, but please do provide the feedback anyway because with feedback is how we get better. Um, that's me. Um, if you've got any questions, I'll hang around down here out of the way and you can ask me those. Thank you very much, everyone. Have a great Dreamforce.